What is shaking you two? Oh, shaking. We're going to get an intro, right? He loaded up an yeah. intro. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, it's not, it's not TiVo. It's uh, Justin, a.k.a. Nemesis Prime. Welcome to Lords of the Long Box, the weekly shakers report. Of course, this is brought to our friends at CoverPrice.com. We've got a lot of people here tonight. Got a three-man blue group and uh, a friend, Jack. So uh, before we uh, start this, of course, we always like to play a little DJ action. Yeah, and so this is the time for you people watching on the Rewind. If you don't like music, fast forward. So yeah, if you watch on the rewind, something. just fast forward. But you know, you. if you do enjoy it, go ahead and drop Stick that crown because it's some. And if you don't like it in the stuff. live, just you know, you know they like it in the live, baby. Love <laughs> the live. They love it in the live. Come on, man. Let me find something good on this list. I think I like this one. Let's play it. All right, on. that's it. <laughs> Set ever, dude. Uh, that ever. was already busted. Oh, that, that was last awesome. 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. So let's go Come around on. the horn. What's going on, everybody? Uh, JB from Discovery Bay. What's up, man? I'm fired up, man. I have fired up for this list. I'm fired up for the only time I ever get to go on YouTube anymore, which is Thursdays for this show. And thank you, everybody who's watching on the replay and everyone who's watching live for joining us tonight. Make sure you do hit that thumbs up, man. It's gonna be a great show. And we got our man, Dark Side Jedi. What do you think of that intro, bro? Yo, it fits. It fits. I love it. I love that. You know, the uh, the Imperial March on anything is a good time for me. What's up, mm -hmm. everybody? Happy Thursday. Uh, mm -hmm. We are the Lords minus one. Uh, shout out to Carla. Uh, Tim's girlfriend had to have a little surgery, so we are putting out good vibes for her tonight. Absolutely. And uh, we will have Tim back, I believe, on Sunday when he does his letters of the long box. And a long-term spec report. And a long-term spec report. So tune in Sunday for Tim's return. Mm -hmm. But well, we welcome tonight, man. everybody. Yeah, and our man right below me and Mr. Bolo himself. What's going on, Jake? Oh, man. Happy to be here. You know, end of a long week. But uh, I got I to gotta agree with the sentiment from JB that uh, I, I love it because this is my time to get on YouTube again and do my thing here Friday night or Thursday night uh, before the weekend, you know? Jack mm -hmm. DeMaio, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo on the Lord Show on the regular. Come on, right, man. This right. is a treat. Oh, man, this Thursdays are getting treat, good, man. baby. Thanks for stopping Absolutely. by. This is going to be good, man. Yeah, I got to get the day right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm on well, you know, <laughs> Thursday <laughs> nights always were Thursday nights always were good for TV, right? So, hey, yes. we could bring that to the YouTubes. Yeah, there you go. 
So let's get right into it. So, of course, this show is sponsored by our friends over at CoverPrice.com. Make sure you guys go check out CoverPrice.com. You can get a two-week free trial. Or, of course, you can go for uh, $6.99 a month or $60 for the entire year, which you might as well do because it's the best damn website for comic book collecting. Of course, this show is also sponsored by our friends over at KRS Comics. You can check out the KRS Wholebox.com where you can get 15% by using the code LOTLB. And of course, they have tons of exclusives where you also get 15% off. And the latest one that just went on Ooh, sale Wednesday. is not sold out this past Wednesday. The awesome Moon Knight Ooh, number one cover, cover homage from Stephen Platt. This one is gorgeous in that virgin variant. So, of course, we check out all of our shakers list this week. They are brought to us from cover price and focus on new high sales or the most interesting sales found on the exclusives by the shakers list. This list changes several times a week if you don't know. So make sure you check back every day to review some of the hottest trending books in the market. Let's come right up with our first book. What do we got here? Number one. Number one today is The Amazing Spider-Man number 10. Uh, this is from 2014 and features the first appearance of Spider-Punk, a.k.a. Hobie Brown, who we love. Uh, if you recall this first spike back in 2018 when folks speculated that he would appear in the first animated Spider-Man into the universe. However, as we gear up for the second film, other apps and other sites have started speculating on which alternate Spideys will appear. And Spider-Punk was suggested without any confirmation of any kind. This rose from a $150 book in a 9.8 to this week's new high sale of $450. Raw Man, copies, <laughs> yeah, right. Raw copies are around forty dollars in near mint. Again, this is pure speculation, but these days, that seems to be enough to move sales. Mm -hmm. And this one definitely had a high print run. I mean, Dan Slott was killing it right with the uh, Spider Verse stuff. Yeah. So uh, this story was fantastic. Come on, yeah. I mean, especially you had uh, issue number nine was a second appearance of Spider Gwen, but issue number ten, man, Spider Punk is a cool character. And hey, if we see him in the animated uh, into the Spider Verse, well, well let's take a awesome. poll right now. Do you think we're going to see him in the next film? Uh, I don't see uh, why we wouldn't. I would yeah, say why yes. Not? Why not? I mean, <laughs> 50 /50 at least it's yeah, yeah. I mean. You got have a good to chance. A I don't know if it's more. a $450 nine, eight chance, but I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, maybe he may not be a, a, an outstanding character, but it'll, he'll, they show him they'll, I don't know, whatever, you know, it doesn't need to be a main role. No, absolutely. Just like no, Peter but, Porker. Spider right. Pan. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, like, he's just uh, the character in the show. So right. but this is also a price level where I start to look at it and go, you know, if, if I'm investing, I, this may be a point where you sell even on the rumor. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, mm -hmm. you can sell on the solid rumor. For Spider Punk, yeah, I would. Absolutely. That mm -hmm. sounded advice. I wouldn't friend. keep this if that's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, uh, that's a great price to get right now. And I think there'll be dips but now. I mean, a now, $300 increase $300. in a week. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, it's time to sell. Someone yeah. wanted that book. So to move on to our second book here. DC oh, yeah. book. Ooh. All right. Next up on the list, we've got Batman issue 423, originally published in 1988 from DC Comics. And we've chatted about this book in the past. It's easily one of Todd McFarlane's best covers and quite possibly one of the best modern covers for Batman. Collectors have been recognizing this lately and have been heavily investing in it. And wow, did this drive up the value. This week, a 9.8 hit an all time high. Of twenty five hundred dollars. Wow. Keep in mind this time last year. Last year, a nine point eight would have only cost you about six hundred bucks. Jesus, my God. inflation. <laughs> that Todd McFarlane cover is fire, though. That, that they, oh come on, he so he draws iconic. capes like no other. I mean, mm -hmm. if you think of Spawn, what do you think of capes? And Batman has a sweet cape. This is, I mean, it's it's a perfect storm. Yeah, wow! Well, and this think, isn't even a newsprint, which or uh, not uh, newsstand. Newsstand, news yeah. which which in 1988, I'm not sure if it was more or less, but usually, I think the newsstand on this, to me, I think goes a little higher. But I could, yeah. Be what wrong. we got? So uh, right there 80, on the screen. So in the in the, the 80s, you had right around the uh, 86 you know, or 50, 50. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. And then 50, 90 50. was heavily, so it was you know trending right in between there. trending trending towards being rare. Yeah. But you, right. you, you have a combination of things. You got McFarlane covers really 
selling strong on the secondary market right now on mm -hmm. top of the fact that you really you're starting to look at things like McFarland's DC work is few and far between and not something you're probably going to see him do in the future. So, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Jake. All right, let's get on to our third book, which is another Batman book. Love this. Wow. Book. Two in a row. Now this one's a classic. We're talking about Batman 608, but the second print from DC comics, which released on November 13th, 2002. And speaking of Batman and important modern day covers, look no further than Jim Lee's classic covers for issue 608. Cover A is awesome in its own right, but this second print is already considered an iconic Batman cover paired with Superman's number 204's cover A. These connecting covers of soups and bats flexing at each other are absolutely amazing. However, this Batman 608 cover is way harder to get uh, due to its scarcity and it being a second print. Due to this scarcity, it sells for a significant premium as seen in this week's new all-time high sale of $600 for a CGP 9.8. Wow, 600. I don't have a 9.8, but I do have this book. I actually have... A, I think it was from the New York Times or the New York Post. I, I correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. Uh, Marky 316 sent it to me as a roke, a uh, random act of kindness. It was you would you found it in the paper, so I don't know what variant it would be called or whatever. It looks uh -huh. exactly the same. It's it's kind of beat because it was in the newspaper, but it's a pretty cool book. And yeah, I know which one you're talking. You're just talking about the regular 608. Like they've only done this. this no, it was cover, this cover. Oh no, no, it might have been the regular 608. Yeah, am I? And what's the uh, the flip side to this cover is the Superman issue, yeah. which is uh, yeah. I I don't know the issue off the top of my head, but I, it's the same thing with him just standing there, yeah, and Jim Lee did that as well. Okay, yeah, there you go, Jake 204. And this is an absolutely great cover. This is they never really did second prints too much on the Batman stuff. And when they did, it would just, it wouldn't change the covers. This was really, I think the first time they ever did change a cover to something different. So really awesome to see some books, especially on this list that people should definitely have. So um, how about our fourth book in this series, which is another Batman book. Well, this is you're, crazy. What? If you're it's into Batman, on. if you're into Batman, I guess uh, this is a good list for you this week. The Batman adventures, mad love, prestige edition from 1994 collectors have always seemed to favor the standard cover of the batman harley man love one shot however the prestige edition and its two additional printings are all starting to do quite well in the aftermarket a 98 of the first print prestige edition sold for a high of 850 dollars this week unbelievable mm -hmm. I like hearing book. that though. Yeah, I like the oh, cover. Yeah. Even the Joker's got a maniacal laugh going on right now as he's rattling yeah. off some. Definitely some a better. Money. I like this is a better cover than the first printing, without a doubt. Do you think uh, the fact that they are doing a new animated Batman or along these lines that these kind of uh, these Batman Adventures books might start to pop a little bit because of the animation? Or Maybe, no, but I think it's just the scarcity that. of the prestige edition. They no, no, no. I'm saying in general, not just this book, but no. the fact that, you know, they're doing the new Batman anime yep. series again, which isn't it done. I mean, Paul Dini's involved, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all these people. Time, yeah. So the Batman Adventures, what isn't that based off of the cartoon originally, the original cartoon? Yep. Yeah, you're so, right. I think Maybe we'll start to see a little heat. You're seeing uh, already like the TMNT Archie run. Mm -hmm. really spike in, in it, it's one of the few runs where even outside key issues you're still seeing spikes especially in high grade i think you can see a lot of that translate over to the animated stuff because they were really targeted towards a younger audience right kids didn't keep them in great shape uh, but those kids are now adults and they're nostalgic for those books yes mm -hmm. as we're seeing all these 90s books <laughs> definitely so let's kind of move away from dc for a moment and our next book up all right, next up on the list, we've got Black Widow number one, the J.G. Jones Yelena variant, originally published in 1999 from Marvel Comics. And we're finally starting to hear reviews on Black Widow and folks are raving about Florence Pugh's portrayal of Yelena Belova. Many stating that the moniker of Black Widow is in good hands. Now, this high praise is giving collectors that extra confidence it needed to start reinvesting in her first full appearance in this issue and cover. And it had a new high sale of $700 for a CGC 9.8. If these reviews are accurate, then expect that price to jump significantly once this movie releases. What do you guys mm -hmm. think of that? 
Yeah, I I'm excited like, for yeah, the movie. Mm, mm. Yeah, definitely. What's what's her first appearance? It's an Inhumans book, in like Inhumans. her first cameo. Five. Yeah, I like that book a lot. But if this is her first full one, I full, this is, first full appearance and cover. This one is gonna spike in uh, less than two weeks. And it's a black cover, so it'll be hard to get in a high grade. Good luck getting a yeah, yeah. right? All those Marvel Knights from that era. I mean, almost every series, it either had like some sort of black in the trade or it, it had gray or white. It, it was so difficult to get mm -hmm. 90. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with Jeff. It's got that Aeon Flux vibe. Mm. Yeah, sexy, sexy. All right, let's move on to our next book. And if I don't think anybody in the chat has this book, and if they do, I, I have it. I have it. Oh, oh, well, I said the chat, <laughs> so I'm not allowed. <laughs> Sorry. Let's check out this one. This is odd. Yeah, we're taking it outside a little bit here with Destroyer Duck number one from Eclipse in from 1982. Sergio Aragones is a comic book legend and a hell of a nice guy. He has a huge fan base and is practically the core DNA of Mad Magazine. Throughout his award-winning career, one of his greatest characters was Gru the Wanderer. Created as a satire of characters like Conan, his work on this title brought him significant fanfare. In fact, in 1992... He was the first Mexican-American to ever win the Eisner Award for his work on the title. With all that said, many don't realize that Gru's first appearance is in the first issue of Destroyer Duck number one. At the end of the issue, they included an original story featuring three pages of this new character with no other call to action. This is easily one of those books you can uh, easily flip past. However, this week's new high sale of $575 for a 9.8 and a $50 raw price is a good reason to pick this up. Yeah, this is one of those books that showed up in a long box that I bought years ago. Wow. Um, I don't think it's a 9.8, but it's still kind of a funny book. I was like, it was like too rare not to keep or not rare. I didn't know anything about it, but it was like, you never see this. It's too cool. And then the special lawsuit benefit edition. I love that. I yeah, wouldn't be surprised if this book is not littered in dollar benefit. books. In dollar oh, books. Yeah. well, be. this is this is one of those books. Like, shout, shout out to Matt DeVoe from Cover Price. I, you know, all like the old school speculators. You know, back in the 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 CBSI G plus days, um, those those kinds of guys. This is always one of those favorite books to pick up because this was always a book you could find under value, dollar bins, five dollar bins, and mm -hmm. and it does always command. A, a, some sort of attention on the market because Gru is kind of like a classic indie character. Yeah, like a, it definitely has a cult following. Yep. Interesting. I've never seen this book, but I'm sure if I look for <laughs> I'm it, gonna have to bin, I'm going to have to dig. I got to find it. I'm going to It's dig. one of those things that until you until you know to look for it, you don't realize you probably have seen it dozens of times. Hmm. Well, from Eclipse to what do we got? He-Man. Yeah, here we go. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, number 18. This is a DC publication. Uh, wow, we got a lot of DC. Right. Uh, out of 2014, the Masters of the Universe comic books have always been a bit of a mess. They, <clears throat> excuse me, they have started and ended multiple different new comic series over the past 35 plus years. This has led to multiple first appearances, but almost no official canon continuity. The upcoming Masters of the Universe Revelations hopes to change that. However, this 2012 DC run was considered the closest thing we had in terms of canon storylines. So when we look at a character like She-Ra, she's even more complicated, uh, even more of a complicated first appearance than the rest of the Masters of the Universe cast. Technically, her first comic appearance is in 1985's comic adaptation of He-Man and She-Ra, the secret of the sword. However, we'll flash forward to this 2012 DC series where Adora's origin is rewritten and appears throughout all issues. Notably, she also appears as She-Ra on several covers prior to this issue, like that awesome number one Dotson variant, um, number five and number 14. And I think we had the Dotson variant a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. on this list. Uh, so why is this issue important? Uh, as a Masters of the Universe fan, you would have to notice that Shira was missing from all forms of content, animated series, comics, etc., for decades. Rumor has it that Mattel just sold the rights for Shira to Universal, and while it's unknown if they still own the rights, for one reason or another, 
she was included in this series and was considered her homecoming return to the Masters of the Universe. It was a big deal. And in this particular issue where she transforms from Adora to the Princess of Power for the first time in well over 30 years, and man, how awesome is this cover? Well, this book suddenly jumped from $190 in a CGC 9.8 last July to a new high sale of sixteen hundred dollars. That's like a that's like a thousand percent increase. Crazy. Now, note we spared you from the complicated mini comic continuity where she also appears. Mini comics? No, come on. Yeah, I guess so. People like those, though. You know, people like the mini comics. Yeah, it's just but part yeah, of the but no, this is property. This is definitely a crazy book to see on this list for for me because it's. I think I was collecting these books to read them back yeah. back in the day. I have to dig through and see if I have this one. I completely sold this run, but I got to tell you, Stephen uh, Stephen Chepchek, who did these covers, are oh the fun. covers oh, are phenomenal. Oh, the artwork is phenomenal. Yeah, and Poe you know, Man, my, who's the artist interior, he is he's a great artist, and I met him in a convention. And one. these were good stories. Ooh, yeah, and then they did the DC He Man kind of verse versus crossover. That was cool too. Mm -hmm. You know, where the DC characters ended up in the Master of the Universe universe. Yeah, He Man is super hot right now. Eternia. Yeah. With Netflix coming next month. Cannot wait for that. Series. That looks awesome. Start, man. Yeah. Um, but $1,600, $1,600 so, for oh, that's crazy. From man. 190 yeah. to 1600 yeah. For wow. She Ra? Come I on, think man. it's a largely, too, though, a case of the fact that, like, these niche collectors in these smaller markets like Masters of the Universe, there's a lot of completionists. So yeah. when you are uh -huh. talking about people who are trying to put together, say like nine, eight runs, like my yeah. man, Brian Wood, shout out from Simpleman's Comics, who that's, this is his favorite property. He has a complete volume one, nine, eight run. Wow. Uh, I know he's going on from there. Um, but like that, those kinds of collectors, it, they're willing to pay for this. And, th and this, is, you know, being issue 18, smaller print run. Right, right. Yeah. How, how many issues were the total? I you know. know. I, I think mean, it only went up to maybe 20, if not 19. Okay. It definitely, it definitely wasn't For short. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, so you're not like, finding these in bins at all. And when you're finding mm -hmm. them, you're not finding them nine eights. Oh, definitely not. Jake's that you're, you're hundred percent. Right. So uh, let's move on to the next title that I should, I was telling you guys about, no, I shouldn't tell that. Uh, I don't have the, actually the graphic. I just actually download this one real quick. <laughs> How about this now, one? You know what? There's a perfect time to, to to shout out the chat who's been with us. This is one of the best live chats yeah, on YouTube. Shout out to you guys for hanging out with us during the cover prize top. Uh, this is the shakers list. Sorry. During the cover prize shakers list. And next up on the list, we've got Miracle Man number 12, the Adam Hughes 1 in 25 variant, originally published in 2014 from Marvel Comics. Now, Miracle Man has been stuck in legal and creative limbo since his initial creation in 1954, and it wasn't until Alan Moore got his hands on the character in 1982 and created one of the darkest, most poignant comic books of all time. Now, despite the popularity and high interest in the character after Moore's limited series, no one knew what to do with the character until 2014 when Marvel revamped the character. While this new series was met with mixed reviews, it did produce this gorgeous cover of Miracle Woman by Adam Hughes. This cover was pretty hot when it first came out. However, over the years, it fell out of collectors' minds. This week, it had a 9.8 sale of 350 bucks, which shows that the fans are still out there and they are paying attention. Now, there's rumors of a new Miracle Man series, so fingers crossed. Man, what do you guys think of that cover? I'm pissed again. I was collecting this. I was, I was, I was, I was <laughs> collecting this issue or this run. I think I have up to 20 and I probably missed this variant. Damn it. This is, the, this is the second week in a row. I've got the normal number 12. Was that worth anything? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. This is the second week in a row that we've shown like big variants. Last week we, we looked yeah. at the, the Thrawn Matina. Um, That's right. That I had when they came out, but I've sold. I know. And where the market is today, it's like, oh, it's heartbreaking. God. It just, but I just think that that's such a common occurrence now. Oh, it is. It is. Absolutely. Are really trending. Um, you know, this was one of those. I remember the the week that this came out. This was one of those one in twenty five variants, and if you could have bought for ratio, you were tripling your price on release day. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I started two and two, and now I'm two and eight. This is terrible, man. <laughs> 
I got a good amount of I got a good amount of books on this. And this next book is a book that I absolutely love. And the last issue just came out this week. What do we got? We're talking about Stray Dogs number one, but we're talking about the exclusive preview edition from Image that was released on February 24th, 2021. With Stray Dogs growing popularity, the exclusive preview edition popped up out of nowhere this week with one copy listed where it promptly sold for $600 raw. Like, like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you got to pause after that. $600. Oh raw. my goodness. I, was, that I, in I, I thought I heard you correctly. That, that yeah. was raw, right? This wow. series. I mean, when you're talking about a series that's red hot, I don't think it gets hotter than this series right now. Yeah. I just watched the cover a, and well, this is the main cover, uh, even though this is the previews comic, but the cover right. a and the cut and the B variant, I just watched it ended two nights ago for just under $200 at an auction, mm. which is only, you know, five, about five months old. Now, uh, this yeah. series is absolutely great from uh, great story. Trish, yeah. From Trish Foster is the artist and Tony flex is the writer, uh, heartwarming story it's it's very it looks like disney you got sophie right sophie's the cover dog right there Mm -hmm. Uh, i absolutely love this story not for children uh yeah not for children if you read it for children (laughs) you will get sad if you're a dog fan you will probably cry but uh absolutely great series uh and to round out the shakers for the night uh my favorite book and i'm gonna do this one because Take it home. i am nemesis prime transformers number one from marvel 1984 so let's keep this one simple and quick just noticing a high sale last week of a 9.8 going for three thousand and twenty five dollars <laughs> <Good, good, good. laughs> unbelievable last year this book was going for just under a thousand dollars with 750 dollars and 9.8 last june which is absolutely crazy. What in the world? Uh, I had a no, I have a nine six, and I thought, and I should have upgraded to a nine eight last year. I there, it's untouchable. Like there's see, no way I'm upgrading to a nine eight now. Right. This is the thing. I I, I would want to see. I never understood how a book could go from seven fifty to three. So so someone just posted out of the blue, like someone you know, everyone those people make fun of on eBay who just throws up a number. And you're like, oh, that book will never sell, and yeah. then it sells. Is this what we're seeing? I just I don't understand how it can go from seven fifty to three thousand in a year. Wow! Wow! Yeah, that's just absolutely crazy. I, I mean, yes, they just announced this week that they're doing the next Transformers movie. But still, uh, why not nine hundred? You know, or a thousand, like from seven fifty to twelve hundred. That seems reasonable. It's just going to rise. <laughs> I don't know, man. Right? It's the it's it's the sweet spot. It's yeah. The oh, 80s it's, nostalgia. Cra- it's just it's it's. I, you know, I've got a couple of these crazy. in play because I'm I'm. I'm chasing these. I'm chasing, you know, all those eighties GI Joe, mm-hmm. you know, that's just, I mean, man, I got undercats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any of that 80s stuff, man, if you can just I love find it, I love now, it all. get a not look for it in a nine, eight, very cheap or try to buy it near mint and slab it up and just hold on to it. So when you see right. these sales, it's just like, damn. Well, and I also, think, I also think the promoted. announcement, the announcement is key. Um, you know, and, and Nemesis prime, well, you can speak to this, but it's, you know, you're not just talking about another Transformers movies. You're, you're talking about really expanding the universe. Um, and I think that that's going to bring a lot more to the comic. Well, what in, I guess I, I guess what investor, what smart investor is buying yeah. a book that's worth seven hundred, eight hundred dollars for three thousand dollars? Well, see, that's the thing is when you're saying what what it's worth, that's where it's subjective. Why because- does it have to be an investor that bought it? I'm well, not saying it was. But I'm say just it saying. Was. I'm just, just saying. Just to say it. Just to say it is. Because um, you know, we talk about speculation. We're talking about Tim always talks about um, you know the the new money that's coming from the Bitcoin from the yeah. Reddit uh, stocks. You know they're they, they can't buy you know sending cards, so they're buying. Comments, I, I think whatever the reason. I think it's strictly a matter of age. I, I mean. This is my sweet spot. I'm 48 years old, four, going to be 49. So, I've got more disposable income than I've ever had before because I'm 48 it. and 49. And yeah. now we, I can afford to buy the shit I want. And I think there's a lot of people in my sweet spot right now. Yeah. Well, and I, mm-hmm. in my opinion, in my opinion, when you see price escalations like this, it's when multiple segments of the market are buying a book at the same time. So okay. I think I think it's both. You're both right. Um, so I think that you have investors who are investing actively in properties like this because they see the wave of <laughs> that that era of uh, of fandom coming into like money now and being able to make these sort of major purchases. But at the same point, to JB's point, you're also seeing those exact same um, 
there's a kind of like exact same purchases being made by collectors who want to lock down those books right. before prices escalate to levels right. they're not going to be able to no touch we them. are seeing some some record breaking numbers i mean just the heritage auctions we had a week ago Oh, yeah, you go, we can go over man, a few of those. About so. some of those. Those are insane. You got some so, numbers on that? I just, I just think that's the point, though. Is like, it's, it, yes, it's insane, but where is the market going to go? A I year guess, I guess, you know, when you look at these cover price lists, and you look at um, uh, GPA, and you look at some of the other apps that show market mm -hmm. uh, sales, sales, mm -hmm. you see, you know, from for you, you'll see a steady rise. You know, you'll see, yeah. but. These sky, I guess what I'm blown away by is just the, you know, 150 or 190 to what was it, 1600, you know, 750 to 3000. Those incredible jumps, and we're seeing them way more often. Um, that's what kind of I can't wrap my, <laughs> my head no, around. It's, it's nuts. One. And let's I, so yeah. like you said the heritage dog we got we yeah. have a few books here why don't we each each pick one real quick to talk about and then we'll take a look at the shakers list right now so i'm gonna go right real quick whatever detective comics number 27 just <laughs> sold this past week for appearance of batman and a cgc 5.0 for one million one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in a cgc 5.0 wow. for first appearance of can you pull it up in the uh can you pull uh, it up yeah we'll pull it up price? on the We'll pull it up on cover price. Um, Man, let's take a look at that. Baby. I, I want to talk about the a, giant size. Because, I mean, it just did this. If you see those last three 9.8 sales, you thought, hey, that's a huge dip. And then, why? Well, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> and then it comes right back. All right. So, Damn, what's, you your address, bro? what's your address, bro? What's your address? Who's this? Yeah, so, yeah, everybody likes looking at Tim's. So Good here's lord. Mine. Everybody wants to Go uh, googly goo. Get away from me. <laughs> and I don't really agree on this highest comic value because I think my first appearance of Scarecrow is worth more than this. But since there's no fair market Sales. value on that, yeah, they can't. Um. So yeah, let's go right over to the cover price. Choo, choo, choo. Let's see. Uh, Shakers list, of course. The Daily Shakers. Shakers. Here we got. So if you're watching us, you got to to unlock the full list, which I think is now up to 55 or 60 books. 60 in for the, the yeah. yeah. 60, full, 60 full books in the Shakers well. list. And the list literally changes daily. I mean, there will be sales. There may be a, a book that we picked today that had a sale earlier this afternoon, and it's already up on the site. Um, and what, what one of the recent changes I think is fantastic is their new FMV, their fair market value. Go ahead and compare FMVs between the comp competition now cover prices on their fmv on point, it's really yeah. a nice tight average of you know current sales not the history of times sales you because know, that that doesn't mean anything anymore current sales are what's important and i think they've really nailed it now all right what have we got can got you full screen this oh um, yeah you can you just full screen that and push us out of the way let me figure that out because i've never done that before yeah, uh, we'll remove just, that one. Here, you know what I'll do? I'll do this. Nobody wants to see our ugly mugs. Nobody wants to see us. They want to see the comics. Yeah, I think you just put that thing full screen. It's the little button on the picture in the corner that'll make it go bigger. Mm. Uh, in StreamYard, not on that. Oh, on in StreamYard. StreamYard. In StreamYard. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That one, right? D yeah. Boom. There you go. Yes. All right. All so, right. You're gonna you're going first. Or, is that on there, Detective? Oh, it's not uh, listed. It's not. Yeah, it's not listed on. Oh, you have of to course, type this it changes in. daily. So let's look it, at that know, giant size X Men. See if they have that nine eight that just hit in this heritage because it's about to hit or or no, it just did hit. Yeah. So twenty. So giant size nine, X Men six. one in nine eight. Um, they don't have it listed yet, but I'm going to tell you the notes. Let me tell you what happened with this book. This book went for a record sale of like sixty eight thousand ish for a nine point eight. And then it's very next sale. Go ahead and open up 9.8 and see if they've got what happened there. Because I think the next sale went all the way down from 68,000 into, open it up there. I think it went 30, what did it go? Got 72,000. 47. Yeah. March. Yeah, this is the, the most current for 9.8. So right right behind it, was it at 35, 45? I think there's another sale in here because I, I I think it went 65 and then it went down and now it shot all the way back up to 72. What do you guys is what's the limit on this book, guys? <laughs> I've got one listed, you know, right now and 
And I, I just don't even know. Do you think that, oh, that we've figure, hit ceiling or is this is like, no, it's no as figure. soon as Disney does a movie, it's going to go yeah, crazy. It'll be a hundred thousand dollar book. Is yeah, this in 9.8 going to be a six figure book yes. here when the movie for breaks? Sure. Yes. For yes. Sure. I agree. Because the I rising agree. tide, my friend, takes all ships with it. So my 4.0 is going to go with it. I still look at the top, the top, top comics and say that most of them are undervalued. Compared to like, because when you start comparing them to other commodities like sports cards, uh, there's you start comparing on a one to one level. Um, there's still so much room for these these real iconic comics to grow in value. Yeah, these top the five top are... Of this list are unbelievable. <laughs> there's one <laughs> price on here though that shocked me. That there was honestly, I'm the most bullish person you will ever meet on the market, and there was one stunning price for me, and that was Marvel Spotlight number five. Five Ghost Rider. I knew it. Yeah, that was the one that I just I, I as I'm as bullish as they come. I don't know that I could support. Not saying that that book won't increase. Um, and they and if they could ever get it like right within the MCU, it wouldn't be huge. Um, but if I, you're asking me to spend, you know, upwards of four times a giant size X Men number one, I mean, no. Nah. You know, give me give me multiples of of giant size X Men. Hey, the Lords of Longbox sold one of those. Uh, go back down the black suit Spider Man. We sold one of those on our. We just this well, his, oh the black suit where we where'd you see that? Um, this one no one forty one right there. Great. So last sold was Not a nine four. We didn't sell a nine four, but somebody got a good deal. Somebody got a deal. Yeah, you got a you got a nice sale. It was it was nice on the last week's nice. Lord's auction, so not bad for uh, for early black suit Spider Man. But there's some good books on here. You know, this one right here, man. This Stray Dogs Blair Witch Project. This was an exclusive variant for these, a retailer. These horror cover homages are amazing from Hive Comics. I think this was like a twenty dollar book. Last wow. sale, three hundred and seventy five dollars for this. Amazing. And I, and I was I love this series and I just couldn't get into the horror ones. And I was just like, I can't buy the exclusives for every series that comes out. And I'm passed on this. And I cannot believe what the price well, is right now on yeah. this. So the ones you skip are the ones that always go up. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also one of those ones that was really. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. I just saw the number on that one. I just Not saw the number. Exclusives. Go, go back to Marvel Spotlight five. Go, go back there. We need to open that up and take a look at that. That sale. Oh, yeah, oh, that was one of the biggest I sales. I put four times a giant size X-Men number one. I meant like four times a giant size. It, so a new high sale was just captured on Heritage. Is that what you're telling me? For $264,000. <laughs> Someone thinks Johnny Blaze is coming sooner rather than later. Whoa. Whoa, it, it's dude. It's crazy to me because we know the X-Men are coming. And I know, and look, I understand that this black cover is uh, 10 times harder, 9-8, than most covers from the era. But at the same point, I just, man, it, it's not for me that a comic is worth $264,000. i am fine with that. It's just the idea that is this the one that I would spend that kind of money on? If I was spending this kind of money in the market, I just got to believe there's better buys. But hey. Oh, yeah. And when I complain about prices, it's not that I hate the price it's i'm just in shock of the jump that's all yeah my guess is whoever bought that is a collector oh you know, kang i just bought one forget. of those i think so sometimes they, you forget there's big money collectors out there they just yeah. dropped a oh, trailer yeah. during uh, the nba for this shang chi book uh and i'm sure prices are going to be on i haven't seen it because we're live right now but i know i just got a notification that the trailer just went up so with no, abomination in it apparently oh really mm -hmm. what so uh you know, this book is on fire. This book just sold in a nine oh. eight last week for fifteen thousand oh, plus. Man. And I know our man Tivo, he's got a nine six. So if anybody's looking for a nine six, may want to jump on that sooner rather than later because that. Book you know, you could have gotten it on last Friday for probably way cheaper than you could have got it today. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he right. was selling it last right. Friday on our wow. auction he had a nine six available yep. i think it was uh it was under fair market value too it was way it under and, and, and i think uh, that book's gonna skyrocket yes I, I really i really believe in that film and that franchise me too i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be a launching pad for a whole segment of the mcu there's my thundercats right there man i'm telling you 
Got some interesting books on this Shakers list. Again, the Stray Dogs is on here. It's got some Silver Surfer books. This one's odd to have that Silver Surfer black. Ice Cream Man. Man What's Spons. that Elseworlds book? This was a, a recall. There was what is this a, like a first appearance, or I think there's a recall in it. That's why it's um. Uh, they don't have the information, but last sold at ten. There was a wow. ten once. Wow, just under uh, five thousand. Uh, I'm sure someone in the live chat will know. There's yeah, there's something with this book. I, I forgot. I think it got recalled for some reason. Um, don't quote me on that. But what All else right, hold on. Have? There's another one. Where's fantastic? You got? Uh, I just uh, this book. This Thor annual. Glad I got rid of that Thor annual. <laughs> was FF48 on here? Um, I think I saw it. Yeah, hold on. Uh, FF50 is on here. You got 52, 48. Yeah, right here. All right. So look at the new high sale in 9.8 on that. Gosh. Holy shit. Well, yeah. So, so to answer to your question, <laughs> JB, that GSX book is going to be a $500,000. Oh, book. my God. When God. they announce MCU, how can X-Men? GSX one but, not be a hundred grand? I see that I if see. Silver Surfer is a hundred grand by himself, and in my mind, yeah, if Silver Surfer is a hundred grand, then GSX should be <laughs> should be a hundred four hundred fifty thousand. It'll be yeah. four hundred fifty thousand dollar book by the right. time they announce X Men MCU, or the first time someone says an, uh, one of the mutants' names. Let's say they, <laughs> they say Wolverine or, or Logan in an MCU movie. Holy shit, everybody's head would explode. Cozy Ghost has a note to self. Any bronze keys worth more than 5K, go to, <laughs> Her- go to Heritage. Apparently, you'll get 200,000 easy money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always buy DC Shout books. Out Cozy Ghost. <laughs> what else we have on this list? Carnage, you gotta say, is a cool book. Of course, The Stray Dogs. It's like, there's like four of those on here. Uh huh. Young Avengers is always popping up on this list. Vengeance, of course, first appearance of America Chavez. That book is going to spike as soon as trailer drops or that movie comes out soon. Let's take a look at uh, America, Ch- America Chavez. Number one is on this list. That's crazy. I saw a book. You know what? Had. Shout out to Tim. We'll end it with a Doctor Strange at the end. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Because, you know, Strange. this is an interesting book. What was this book. one? 179. Doctor Strange number one. Is this the and first it is, meeting? It's the first appearance of Tim Vo on a cover. Look at that head. Look that at that head. head. <laughs> the first well, zoom in on appearance that. of Tivo on the cover. Look at that. There he is. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's really cool. So the last sale, the last recorded sale was $250 and a 9.4 highest was two year, three years ago. 9.6 for $1,100. Respectable. Awesome. Oh, awesome I like book. that Captain Crunch. That that sounds like a show I may have to do, man. Check the census for comparison on how many 9.8s there are of those. Good point. All Good right, point, guys. So that's the Shakers list for this week, June 24th. Great list, right? That yeah, was fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Yeah, Matt had it a cover price. So it was a baby Superman in a microwave is in that Elseworlds book. So that's why oh, it was a recall okay. book. Oh, jeez. That's my <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, but uh, shout out to the almost 200 people that are with us tonight. Yeah. This live chat has been crazy. Um, Good nice. Stuff. It's the best live chat on YouTube, man. It really Hands is. Hands down. Yeah. So let's go around the horn before we get out of here. Jake, where can everybody find you? Jack. Social media, Jack. AKA, AKA Mr. Bolo on uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, everywhere you can find me uh, tomorrow or not tomorrow, Saturday. See, I'm still on fr- Friday, man. Still, See, everybody's it's messing crazy. up. Crazy. Um, so Saturday, you can catch me Saturday morning, um, 11 a.m. Eastern time for the CBCS live podcast, um, YouTube, Twitch, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And our man Ryan, with the Robin Hat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can find me here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and maybe if I get off my ass, I'll eventually do something on my one of my cha- on my channel. I think I promised some chronic back issues, so slowly but surely, I'm getting through a lot of these books, trying to organize the hell out of it. But uh, did you ship out everything from your office? I did. Yep, everything is going out. It's uh, on the way. So, <laughs> hey Tim, you're just in time. We're <laughs> logging off, right. buddy. Ten out of ten, he says. Nice. Ten, ten of ten. I like it. Great seeing you tonight. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're still taking a break from uh, creating content on my channel. Uh, shout out to everybody with all the well wishes. I appreciate everybody that's, you know, reaching out to me. But I do want to mention, man, I'm coming on strong. This Tuesday at noon Pacific Standard Time, 
come on over to the hottest new app called Whatnot because I'm going to be selling some stuff on it. Damn. Yeah, that's right. JB from the Lords of Longbox got his stuff a little Whatnot spot, and we're going to try and make it a little regulars. I'm going to be do Tuesdays at noon. That's my shtick. Nice. Tuesdays at noon. Like so look stuff. for me here on Thursdays and Tuesdays at noon on Whatnot. Awesome. Cool. And for myself, I've shipped out every book from last week's auction except for one. Um, I emailed the guy, Ronnie Strife, for the guy who won this cool uh, Taskmaster sketch for me last week. Please hit me up. Sketch? I emailed you. Yeah, it was a sketch. So uh, check that out. Wow. Yeah, really dope. Uh, he won that. I haven't shipped it out because he hasn't given me a shipping address. So if you could please hit me up if you're watching this on the Rewind. Uh, for myself, Justin, I'm also on the Comic-Con podcast. New episode drops tomorrow. We had a really cool guest, J2 Ramirez, on tonight talking some drama. Uh, that's it from here, us at Lords of the Long Box. Of course, Tim will be back on Sunday with Letters from the Long Box and a long-term spec report. I believe, Ooh. was it a Neymar? I think we got some Neymar, Neymar and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, that's it from all of us here at Lords of the Long Box, guys. Thank you so much. Peace out. Keep digging in them long boxes.